Hi, I'm Carl Lewis, and this is the Bet Central Podcast. Okay, welcome back to the Bet Central Podcast, powered by Bet Cozer. And yes, we are back with our daily World Cup podcast. Uh, we're looking at games in Group A and B. Obviously, it's the third and final group stage match. So matches happen uh, concurrently. So we have Netherlands, Qatar, and Ecuador versus Senegal at five. And then we go to Group B, uh, Iran, USA, and Wales, England at nine. So still four matches, uh, but unfortunately, you might have to switch between the two. Uh, but before we get into uh, the preview, just checking in on on the guys. Uh, Grant, how was your weekend? How are you doing? Uh, I was okay. It was pretty low key. Um, yeah, it wasn't super exciting. I just watched a bit of football and took it easy. Um, and not, I mean, decent games. Um, I'm glad for Dave that Germany got a draw. Although looking at the group, they might even be able to go through, or might even have been able to go through with three points in a very strange group. Mm. So. But still, they, it's still um, a confidence boost. Yeah, it was a pretty decent weekend. Mm. Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, you know, like Kran said, I'm obviously happy with the results yesterday. I felt um, that the Spain against Germany game was one of the best games at the World Cup. You know, technically, mm. uh, two teams at a very, very high level. And then obviously, have to give a shout out to um, Keisha Fuller after he scored uh, that winner. For Costa Rica against Japan, you know, that obviously was a great result yeah. for Germany in this group. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we've got four games. Um, like I said, Group A, Netherlands versus Qatar. Qatar is out of the World Cup. I don't think they won't be able to qualify. Whereas the Netherlands and Ecuador, they're both on four points. Senegal, uh, they on three points. So a lot to play for there. So, of course, we're going to do our daily two odds from David and we'll do our usual um, single bets uh, from all of us. So let's get cracking. Netherlands guitar. The Netherlands are on four points. Uh, they drew with Ecuador 1-1, a nice win against Senegal 2-0. Uh, they face Qatar. Do you expect the three points here was probably, Grant? Yeah, it does seem like, a, like a pretty much a banker because, you know, Qatar are already out. They've lost both the games. The Netherlands are the strongest um, team on paper in this group. But, I mean, Qatar were much, much better in their second match than they were in their first. They were pretty decent against Senegal. I mean, in the second half, Senegal took their um, you know, foot off the gas quite a bit. And Qatar yeah, really could have come back to 2-2 at one stage. I mean, they had a lot of chances. Mendy made a couple of decent saves. He didn't make a, like a lot of saves, but the ones he did were relatively good. And yeah, they looked a lot better and took a few more risks in possession. And the Netherlands, I mean, they were not very good on Friday night at all against Ecuador. I mean, Louis van Gaal said they, his team were very good without the ball, but just mm. nowhere near their their right level, like on it. And I mean, yeah, they only had two shots in the match, which is just quite staggering. Um, and yeah, they won up and then didn't they, they couldn't hold on, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's happened. I think it's, um, it's the first time in absolute ages in the World Cup. I can't remember. I think yeah, the first time since 1998, they've, they've led in a game, um, scored the first goal and not actually won the fixture in the World Cup. Um, so yeah, this Dutch team doesn't, excite me that much until members mm. Depay is back. And I mean, if he's not fully fit, which you assume is the reason, then it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily makes sense to bring him back for this game. You know, if it's, it is a bit of a risk, I think you can win without him and give him another 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then have him in the knockout rounds, definitely fit. So if you start him, you play 60, mm. maybe he breaks down, it's actually a bit of a risk. So yeah, I'm not super high on the Netherlands until he's back. But Dave nailed his Cody Gakpo goal again, you know, um, prediction again. Yeah. He's scored it from outside the box this time. But pretty crazy that they only had two efforts and the one was the goal. So, yeah, the Dutch, I'm not super high on, but they should beat Qatar and get some confidence. I mean, no host nation's actually lost by four goals in a, in a group game. they have been three, they've lost by three goals, um, Qatar. Um, yeah, so, um, so the one is obviously South Africa against Uruguay, which is not, not ideal. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so we have part of that bad record. But Qatar, yeah. Yeah, could, if they take four goals in this game, they'll make history. So I wouldn't be surprised if, Denmark, um, if the Netherlands sorry, do um, get a few goals, but... I'm not that high on them. It might be a confidence-boosting game. Uh, also, I'm a bit, mm. bit worried about Louis van Gaal making a, a few changes and rotating. He made a couple from the first game to the next one. You know, Timber coming mm. in and Davy Klaassen and stuff. So I, w I might even want to check the lineup just to see how strong they are before I go too big on this one. Okay. Okay. Dave, from a betting perspective, what are you thinking? Yeah, again, pretty much like 
Grant was saying, you know, I, I, I do think Netherlands are the clear favourites for this game, even though they were a bit disappointing so far in the tournament, you know, in particular against Ecuador, where basically they scored and then they just sat back and were hoping, you know, that uh, they wouldn't concede. Uh, I, I was uh, hopeful that, you know, with Van Gaal and some of their results before the tournament, they would be more attacking, but... Um, so far, they haven't, but they are also unbeaten now in 17 games. Um, they should be too strong for this Qatar side. Um, you know, mm. we've seen them twice. Yes, they were a bit improved against Senegal, but, uh, you know, Netherlands, even with a couple of changes, probably uh, resting a few players, should be much better than this Qatar side. And, and you know, they it's good. It's a good fixture for them, like, uh, like Rand said, sorry. Um, yeah. You know, get, confidence in so i selected a uh, netherlands to score two at mm. one two seven odds for mm. for the mouth yeah i mean they've conceded two and three goals um in their matches and they just don't look like a very good side so very likely uh that they will be I, I would also go with that i think that seems pretty reasonable let's go free bet what are you thinking your bet goes a free bet um, I can't really go away from, from him now since he's done it twice for me already, Cody Gakpo to score. You know, obviously I have to wait for the lineup if he is playing and, and the odds have obviously also dropped. I think before the first game he was on, on over three odds to, to score. Now it's 1.83, but it's still mm. almost double the money. Uh, if he does start, you know, I think it's a, it's a, a decent shout that he will score in the third game in a row. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Grant, what are you thinking? Yeah, um, I, because Qatar have conceded, you know, three goals to a Senegal team that aren't um, that good going forward without Mane and so forth. Um, yeah, I think the Netherlands will get a few goals and maybe even break that record, you know, host nation conceding four. Um, so, I mean, just going for the Netherlands, minus two handicap is 2.45. I mean, that seems like a really good value for, for what it is. So, yeah, that would yeah. be my free bet. I think it's, it's quite a tempting one. Mm. I'll go Netherlands uh, win to zero. That's only at 1.83. But I must make note, uh, David's goal scoring uh, bets this World Cup is really, be he's been on fire in that market. I must give you credit there, Dave. Let's move Thanks, to... I will actually want to add one more. If he does okay. start, if he does start, and obviously because we're all sort of expecting, you know, Netherlands to score a few here, Denzel Dumfries, you know, he's very attacking uh, pullback. And he has mm -hmm. a history of scoring goals. So I just look, saw the odds now. He's 5.5 .5 to score. Uh, if he does start, I think, you know, that's why I would also, you know, look for a little bit of a riskier bet. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's move to Ecuador, Senegal, where there is a lot to play for. Um, a draw will see uh, Ecuador uh, go through. Senegal need three points to go through. So a real high stakes affair. Uh, potentially a KG match. Uh, Grant, how do you see this one? Yeah, I think, you know, as you say, Ecuador not needing to win and just needing to draw is a huge advantage because they're a very solid team. I think it's six clean sheets in seven or something. Um, they're very solid at the back. They've only lost once in 17 fixtures. Even in the World Cup, they're four unbeaten. So I think they, they have what it takes to avoid defeat and they'll probably play for a draw because you don't want to open up too much. Senegal do have speed to, you know, to hit you on transition. So... I think they'd be quite solid and relatively defensive. I mean, they're really, really impressive against the against the Dutch. Um, Fifteen shots mm. in the game, one point six eight expected goals. Um, then they limited the Netherlands to zero point one xG, and the Gakpo goal wasn't a very unlikely shot to uh, should be scored. So that, yeah. they're very impressive. They do rely completely on Enne Valencia for goals. He scored all three of their goals this tournament. He scored their last six World Cup goals. You know, going back three tournaments because the you know they didn't qualify in twenty eighteen, but twenty fourteen and twenty twenty two, he's got their last six World Cup goals. Um, Senegal, I thought played okay against Qatar until they had a 2-0 lead and then they just completely uh, got complacent and left massive gaps and were very, mm. actually pretty fortunate not to be, you know, be picked back in that game. Um, and the fact they have to win, uh, yeah, it's not ideal for them um, because they know they're going to face a team that's sitting back and, and lets them have the ball and they're not very, they don't have that many creative passes in their side. Mm. The one thing I hope with Elu Sisa, he played a 4-4-2 against Qatar. He brought in a, you know, an extra striker. Um, Gijo came in and he did well in, um, in the qualifying. And, you know, Bouladia, I saw play for Villarreal a few times before he went on loan to Syria. I also like him as a forward. So they have, that's a decent front too. It might cause some issues for Ecuador if they play quite direct. Um, 
So yeah, Senegal have to open up and hope that they can get the first goal and then maybe Ecuador in a bit of a strange situation, they and I have to try and attack. Uh, but I think if I had to go for like on the betting side of things, I'd probably go for the draw because it's just, it's, it's, it's really set up nicely for a solid defensive side to, you know, to play, for, to play for a draw from the start and to get it. Um, yeah, so I think it could be quite a low scoring mm. and then uh, Ecuador go through in the, in the second spot. Okay. And what are you thinking, Dave? Um, I'm going a little bit against what um, Grant was saying now. Um, I, I know that the, the stats are saying a low scoring game, you know, um, Ecuador yeah. in their last nine games, uh, they were less than 2.5 goals. Uh, Senegal in their last five games, they were four with less than 2.5 goals. But I, I do think, you know, Senegal have to open up obviously in this game because they need the win. Uh, a draw is not going to be enough for them, you know, uh, because obviously Netherlands is, is expected to beat Qatar or at least get a point. So Netherlands need a result here. They need to open up. <clears throat> and Ecuador, you know, I I think like Carl, uh, sorry, man, Grant says they're quite solid at the back, but also um, good in transition. So, you know, um, if uh, Senegal leaves spaces, then they can hurt them on the counter. So actually for mm. Malti, I went with over 1.5 goals. And um, because obviously the stats are sort of going against it a bit, there's good value at 1.34 odds, at four three yeah. odds. Mm. Yeah, and if Ecuador score first, I mean, that's just going to open up the game uh, big time where Senegal need a goal. I mean, Senegal's going to need a goal uh, throughout. So, I mean, there is, uh, there is logic behind your over 1.5. A touch risky, of course, but we move. What are you thinking with your free bet? Because he has scored in both of the first games and actually in the last six, uh, uh, the last six goals for uh, Ecuador at the World Cup, Ena Valencia to score uh, is at two point nine, and I mean he's he's looked great at the tournament. He had some uh, yeah. issues with his knee, so again I would wait uh, for the lineup to come out if he's if he's gonna make it. Um, but he's two point nine to score, and you know like I said, um, with Senegal needing to push forward and open up, I think there could be some space for him uh, and the Ecuador team to exploit. And yeah, that's where my free bet will go. Okay. And you, Grant? Yeah. I mean, I like Dave's line of thinking that, you know, the stats might say low scoring, but then this World Cup's full of surprises. So I think you have to kind of ex- sort of predict the shocks, you know, you can't just necessarily follow the, you know, the trend. So I think that makes a lot of sense. But I'll do the same then. I think it's a, it's a free bet, as you say. I'll go for Senegal just to win. I would, like, I would love them to go through. It would be nice and dramatic. Um, maybe they score first in Ecuador, but positive, you know, how to approach the rest of the match um, to open up to attack, to try and get the leveler. Maybe they leave some space and um, we see some, we see Senegal win the match. So yeah, it's a free bet. So I'll go for Senegal win. I'm going to go for the draw here at 3.10. I think it tasty. I think, yeah, I, I think it will end up a draw. I just have that feeling that Af- Africa might be unlucky here. Okay, that's uh, a Group A done and dusted. Let's turn our attention to Group B. Uh, England on top, of course, uh, with four points. Iran on three, USA on two, and then Wales on one. So uh, still much to play for um, in this in this group. Iran versus the USA. Um, yeah, I think a win for either a win for either side will secure their spot. Uh, so a lot to play for there, and then obviously Wales England. That's obviously a regional rivalry, so there will be a lot to play for there. Uh, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts uh, on these two games. It's a nicely poised group. Uh, let's start with Iran-USA, Grant. How do you see that one? Yeah, it's a very interesting group, but you almost have to preview both games at once because despite Wales being pretty horrible in this tournament, they can still qualify. Um, because Iran got absolutely pummeled by England, they're in a bit of a tough situation. So, I mean, if that game to draw the Iran-USA game, then I think a Wales win would take him through, if I'm not mistaken, because I think it would be four points for both. Um, and because of the goal difference, um, Wales would go through because they're obviously going to improve their goal difference by beating England. And Iran um, have those four, you know, that four-goal margin of defeats in the first match. So the, the group's quite interestingly poised with all these permutations. I mean, yeah, Iran got a great result against the Welsh. They obviously had some luck because there was a very late red card for Hennessy, and then they scored, they scored after that. But they had 21 shots in the game from 38% possession. So they really made a lot of what they had and they, they limited Wales to very little. So 
I think they were quite impressive. They had a really good response to that, you know, that England's humiliation. Um, yeah, they, they limited the Walsh to 0.89 expected goals. Um, Gareth Bale only had one shot in the, the whole match. So they, they were solid. They were more of a Carlos Quiros team, I think we were all expecting to see in, you know, in, in the opener. So mm. I think, yeah, they will go into this game against the US. They will hope that England beat Wales. And then they know that a draw against, against the US will take them into the knockouts for, I think, the first time ever. So um, it's their fifth time of asking, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, their sixth time of asking in the World Cup. They've been knocked out in the groups every other time. So that would be an amazing achievement. And I mean, it's, it's kind of within grasp because Wales are horrible. You, Iran have just beaten Wales. England thrashed yeah. Iran, so England will beat Wales. And then Iran could, could get a draw with the US for sure because as well as the US played against England and they played really well, they were much the better team. Um, Christian Pulisic looking much more like himself, um, hitting the woodwork and stuff. They, they have two draws. They don't have that striker to finish their, their chances. So Iran, I think... I kind of fancy to upset the US, especially because people feel like, oh, the US now, they'd have to win their last game and they'll be through. I think there might just be a surprise with Iran doing enough to qualify. Um, mm. In terms of how, how the game's going to go, it's hard to predict. I mean, in terms of whether it be goals or not, Iran look more solid, more um, cynical in the, the Welsh game. Uh, that's the way to des- describe it, not how Jürgen Klinsmann did. But anyway, um, yes, they were much more cynical and that's how, that works well for them. But their tactical fouls work really well at international level. They won't yeah. care if they get a bunch of yellows because getting to the, the last 16 is like, you know, their definition of winning the World Cup. So they won't care if there's a few suspensions in the next round. So I think they'll make it hard for the US. Pulisic maybe getting a few kicks. And I would, I would say Iran could will get a draw here and, and qualify. Okay. Dave, what are you thinking? Yeah, this one, I'm uh, pretty much agreeing with what, what um, Grant is saying. Uh, I do, I must say that I left it out of the multi because I'm not 100% sure with the Iran against US game. Yeah. Uh, you know, where, where to go. And, mm. and before, you know, when in doubt, you leave it out. Um, but I also have a feeling that um, Iran might get, might get the draw they need here. Um, mm. I can't see Wales beating England in the other game. I mean, we get there, but I mean, Wales have been so horrible. England haven't been great, but I don't know where any goals for Wales is coming from. Mm. Uh, but Iran, like like Grant said, you know, the second game they played like we expected them in in the, in the first game against England. You know, very solid from the back, very dangerous attacking. I mean, yes, they were a bit lucky with the with the red card and the two late goals, but even before that, they hit the uh, post twice, I think, and had another great chance. Um, so I would also agree to go with the uh, Iran or draw in this one. I think, you know, uh, they, they are now playing like the typical Carlos Perez side and, and the U S yeah. will, will struggle to, to, you know, open them up in defense. Mm. Yeah. And so are you thinking, um, a draw with your free bet or what are you, uh, are we leaving it out of our daily two odds, but, uh, with your free bet, what are you thinking here? Um, just because I like, you know, the, the goal scorers, uh, I was looking at Sada Asmun from Leverkusen to score. He was unlucky so far, but he's getting in great spaces. And uh, I think he can, could hurt the U.S. on the counter. He's actually at four, four odds to score. So that's where I would put my free bet this time. Okay. And you, Grant? Yeah, I mean, I do like the score a bit. You know, I've obviously got Taremi and, um, and Asmun up top. They have good players, but... Um, Johan Kabash is suspended, which is a bit of a problem for Iran. Gives him a little bit less service. Yeah. Goal scorers I'd probably stay away from, but I, I think maybe Iran double chance of 1.83 is, is pretty decent. Um, maybe not a huge return on a single bet, but there's so much there's so much at play. Even, you know, England were causing trouble. You know, they sort of posted a group, um, a, sort of the group standings picture with Iran's flag, you know, removing the Islamic symbol. And I think Iran are going to be so motivated for this game. They, I think they'll kick lumps out of the Americans. So, um, they, I, th- I think they will get a draw. Yeah, I think they'll a double chance for Iran as my, as my free bet. Okay. I'm going to go US straight win at the straight two odds there. Um, our final game, guys, Wales versus England. Uh, like Dave said, Wales have been pretty poor this World Cup. Uh, the odds to win is eight. England is at 1.40. Yeah, Grant, how do you see this one uh, playing out? Mm, I mean... Yeah, it's kind of crazy that Wales can still qualify because they've been awful and you kind of forget they actually did get a point in the first match. It feels like they lost both games. That's how, how badly they've been playing. I mean, Gareth Bale's struggling to get involved in their matches. He's got the lowest touches of any player to play the full game against, um, you know, against uh, Iran. 
which happens with attackers all the time. You know, people always quote the lack of touches, but attackers generally do get the fewest touches, especially like in low nine. So not always yeah. that's indicative, but in fact, he only had one, he only had one shot. It was from miles out. They're struggling to involve him in their play. Um, I don't think they're particularly, I don't, I don't be too harsh, but I don't think they're the particularly well coached team. They just look like a bit of a shambles. Um, they've got like this back five with right footed left wing back and they just, they just don't have anything that's really impressive about them. Um, I mean, England yeah. can afford to lose this game and still qualify as long as it's not by four goals, which are obviously crazy, crazy results ever. But England were terrible against the US. Um, a lot of players weren't good in the game at all. The midfield really struggled to get, you know, to actually press and to get the ball off them. I mean, I hope Southgate makes some changes, not necessarily just to drop players, but because the last group game, I think it's a chance to like simulate some competition in the squad. You know, even if you change one or two guys that are, are, are going to come back for the round of 16, at least you've got a few more guys that are sharp and yeah. it feels like there's more competition in the different positions. So, I mean, I think he might consider going to the back three in this one because Kyle Walker must be close to being fit, fit enough to start. You also maybe give Alexander Arnold a game, maybe Foden, and you can, you don't have to be much weaker, but at least you've got a few guys looking sharp and getting into shape. Um, and you practice that back three before the knockouts if you're going to need it against Ecuador, Senegal, or whoever you end up playing in the last 16. Um, and the one, I mean, Kane as well has been a, a slight disappointment. He hasn't scored in two games. He didn't have a, um, a shot against Iran in the first one, even though he got two assists. And he had two shots against the US, one blocked, one wide. Um, not quite at his most impactful at the moment. So, mm. I mean, I'm sure Dave's going to back him again in the goal scoring bets, unless he's been, you know, burnt too much so far. But yeah, I think England will win the game. I hope they make changes and play well and maybe prepare for the knockout stage. Um, yeah, it'll be crazy if Wales somehow win and the results go their way and they get through, though. But yeah, England yeah. win, I think. Okay. Dave, what are you thinking here? Yeah, uh, pretty much like Grant was saying, I, I cannot see Wales get any result against England, even though England also didn't have a great second game. But um, Wales have really been horrible. I'm very disappointed with how they play. Uh, I can't understand. Obviously, it's in the media, you know, but how mm -hmm. people are even discussing Wales beating England by four goals and then, you know, potentially even England dropping out and not qualifying. I, I can't see that happen. I mean, I, w I would run naked around my house if that happens, honestly. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know where the goals in this Wales team, you know, should come from. Uh, and it, m maybe if they upset England and by one or two goals, but... Uh, you know, I, I can't see this England side, you know, losing uh, by three or four goals against this world side. Um, so for the multi, I selected a England win or draw and under 4.5 goals. I think uh, it, it will be a tight game with Wales sort of unable to open England up and England maybe because of the better quality scoring one or two uh, yeah. against them. I must say I'm very upset with Harry Kane because he denied me a, a thousand rand over the weekend. I played that uh, bet because a bad yes. boost. Yeah. It had Kane, Messi and Mbappe to score at 18 odds, you know, great boost. And, and obviously he was the only one that missed 50 rand yeah. would have been a thousand rand. Uh, so yeah, yeah, he burned me a little bit. <laughs> and uh, so we're going draw and England uh, and under 4.5 for the multi. Are you going to go for Harry Kane um, with your free bet? I think I think in this one, I'd really like to see the lineup. Uh, you yeah. know, he also had some small injury. ankle problem. I don't know if he will play or not. Uh, and who who's playing around him? I think um, in England, a lot of people are, you know, shouting for Phil Foden to, to play and, and rightfully so. It's a bit of a huge surprise, you know, that uh, Southgate didn't bring him on against USA when they needed some spark. And, you know, he arguably he's their most creative player and he, he hasn't really played much. Um, so I'd like to see, you know, who else is, is starting, whether he's making some changes. Um, mm. But yeah, because I don't really see anybody else, um, you know, getting or being that prolific for the England side, for now, I'd probably say I would try Harry Kane again because, I mean, he is on penalties. He is in decent form going into the World Cup. You know, he's England's record goal scorer. Uh, he's England's yeah. top goal scorer. Uh, uh, I think two goals away from, from Wayne Rooney's record. He's at two to score. Um, there is decent value in this. Uh, and I don't think, you know... He will. Uh, he can go on much longer without scoring. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm cool with that. Uh, Grant, what are you thinking with your free bet? Yeah, I think Dave's on the money with um, having to wait for the lineup because Kane might get a break if, if his ankle's in any bad shape. There might also be a few uh, decisions based on yellow cards. Um, I think they did get a, one or two bookings against the US. I don't believe they got any against Iran. I just want to check. Um, no, they didn't get any bookings against the US, apparently, uh, going to soccer way. So they won't have anyone one yellow from a suspension. So they can afford to play their best team, but I still want to see who, who, you know, who actually gets the nod. Um, mm. If Kane's starting, then I think I'll go England win and Kane to score. I mean, 2.57 for that. He'll be, it's a home nations game. He's playing against, you know, championship level defenders who he, you know, eats for breakfast in the Premier League most weeks. Yeah. There's also the chance of penalties with Wales, probably quite physical and emotional. It's a massive game. Um, so yeah, Kane to, England win and Kane, and Kane to score 2.57. Okay. All right, gents. Well, that wraps up our, our Tuesday edition. I think... For tomorrow, we obviously got the uh, Group C and D to look forward to. So Tunisia, France, Poland, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Australia, Denmark. Uh, so we will chat then. Thanks once again uh, for making the time. And yeah, have an enjoyable day of footy, which has just started. So see you guys one then. More, one more thing. Oh, one. Yes. oh, yes. Let's recap. Our, you know, it's tradition now that I forget our daily two odds recap. Uh, so it's all part of the plan. Dave, do you want to uh, wrap it up for us? Yeah, sure. So we said um, Netherlands over 1.5 goals against Qatar, 1.27 odds. Ecuador against Senegal over 1.5 goals in the match, 1.4 odds. And uh, England to win or draw against Wales and under 4.5 uh, at 1.27. Overall, it gives us 2.28 odds. And the mm. code now is... D T Y P G. Okay. One more time, okay? D T Y P G. Okay. Awesome, gents. We'll chat tomorrow. Enjoy your uh, day of footy. Thanks. Thanks, guys.